Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here live across the nation. The phone number and the phone lines are wide open if you want to call in. Be a part of the show today. We'll do a free-for-all on the phones, 877-973-7425, if you want to call in. I'll answer your questions. Um, I I want to take a a, a meta outlook, if you will. I want to talk about something um, and put it in proper context for you across the board. A lot of Democrats are very giddy. The Democrats seem to be a little more resurgent in the polling. 538 has a story about it. It stops, it stops, it's it's the abortion rebound, except there's some polling out there we'll get to that suggests people who are pro-abortion are less likely to vote now. Maybe it's gas prices. Gas prices are going down. The Democrats are rebounding. They don't really know. There appears to be something in the polling. But there are a couple of problems that I want to spend a few moments stringing together for you. Uh, And the biggest is the Democratic bubble problem. Let's go to the issue of a recession. It is very obvious to anyone willing to pay attention that the Democratic Party and the press operate within the same sphere. The Democratic Party and the press operate uh, in the same uh, bubble. So, for example, up until Monday, you had everyone in the political press corps willing to say that a recession was two quarters of negative economic growth. Uh, Pay no attention as well to Nancy Pelosi. And so while they may have saved the second quarter from a technical definition of recession, the fact is we are now uh, 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 into the third quarter and we need uh, we need to have another stimulus package. And yeah, it was Nancy Pelosi making the case that uh, two quarters negative economic growth in 2008 was a recession and we needed stimulus. That was Nancy Pelosi. Now, here's the problem. When so much of the press coordinates with the Democrats and so much of the press rushes out and says, hey, we're not technically in a recession, it it, it really does raise the question, are they coordinated on the other stuff too with the Democrats? And the answer obviously is yes. In fact, uh, there is the, the story, Yahoo News. Here's the headline, Biden is suddenly winning. Overcoming COVID and outfoxing the Republicans, Joe Biden's having an unusually good week. And he won't let Thursday's recession talk spoil his mood. When the 79-year-old tested positive for the coronavirus last week, it seemed nature had decided to pile on his already daunting list of man-made woes. Highest inflation in four decades. Lowest polls of his presidency. A tiny Democratic congressional majority appeared unable to get anything done. Fast forward to Wednesday and Biden declared COVID free, emerged from the White House residence to cheer from the staff. The sun was shining literally and politically. The Senate chose Wednesday to pass a bill pouring $52 billion into domestic manufacturing of semiconductors, the high-tech widgets at the heart of almost every piece of modern equipment. Republicans were on board. Joe Manchin announced his deal in a 50-50 Senate to pass a version of Build Back Better. A recession? What recession? On and on it goes. The spin, it makes you wonder how much coordination is going on with the press. And so just in time, here come the polls 
from the same outlets that have been willfully biased towards Republicans, and they conveniently now trot out polls of a massive rebound of Democratic support in the country. A massive rebound of Democratic support in the country. The problem here is that while those polls show a massive rebound of Democratic support in the country, they do not correspondingly show a massive rebound of support for the President of the United States. And I have a real hard time believing that the gravity pull of the president's numbers doesn't affect affect the Democrats. They seem willfully willing to buy the press narrative and the press narrative the Democrats seem willing to push. And I'm sorry, it just appears to me to be too good to be true for the Democrats. And I don't know how any of us can believe it for a number of reasons. One, we know the polls already have a Democratic bias. This isn't me. This is the pollsters. The pollsters themselves say the polls have a Democratic bias. Also, if you look at the polling average, and this is the most important point, in the polling average, the Republicans are still winning. In the polling average, the Republicans are still ahead in the generic ballot. So they're looking at a series of polls that come out that tell them exactly what they want to hear. Now, yeah, it's true. They tell me things that I don't want to hear. But they also tell me things that don't seem plausible because what really has changed? You say Dobbs, except the very same polling that shows that suddenly uh, there's been the swing towards the Democrats, the very same polling that shows that also says if you are pro-abortion, you are now less likely to vote in November. So what's changed? I think we are in the bubble period. I think we're in the bubble period. We are in that period of time where the American press and the Democrats are so symbiotically linked together that they're believing each other's BS. And that becomes the news story of the day. Do I think there's probably some sort of summer rebound for the Democrats? I actually do think there's a summer rebound for the Democrats in the polling. And I think that rebound in the summer polling for the Democrats has nothing to do with Dobbs or abortion or anything like that. It's the summer. Where are you right now at the very end of July? If you're a Republican, you're more likely to have a family of young kids. If you're a Republican, you're more likely to be going on spring break or uh, final summer vacation, thinking about planning schools. I mean, this is so I'm in Georgia. And in Georgia, during the summer and the late summer and the fall, there's always a rebound for Democrats in the polling. Historically in Georgia, Republicans don't do well in polling right now. This is why I pay no attention to the polling that shows Herschel Walker losing to Raphael Warnock because he should be losing to Raphael Warnock in the polling right now because it's that time of year. But there's always a late summer surge for the Democrats. And why is that? It's because Republicans are more likely to have children. And so they are more likely to be on vacation and not answering phones. The people more likely to answer phones right now are the partisans who want to talk to the pollster. And the people who are the most diehard partisans tend to lean to the left and not like the GOP. And so they're answering. They're identifying themselves as Republicans. They're saying, oh, I'm voting Democrat. They're lying. I'm not making that up. This is not spin. This is what happens. Democrats rebound in late summer, early fall polling because Republicans are at the beach with their families, finishing up their vacations before school starts in the South. School starts, for those of us in the South and a lot of the South, school starts next week. If you're in uh, up, upper mid-Atlantic states in New England, school doesn't start until after Labor Day usually. But in the South, it starts in August. My kids start back at the end of next week. So a lot of friends that I have are on vacation this week, one last vacation, one last hurrah before school starts. They're not talking to pollsters. And very historically, that affects the polling. But none of the polling matters anyway, except the president's popularity. According to Reuters Ipsos, Ipsos, a thousand four Americans. That's not even likely voters. It's all Americans. He's uh, approval rating of 37, disapproval of 58. And this is part of the problem here is when you're not using uh, voters who are actually going to vote, likely voters. 
The Economist uh, shows a Democratic rebound, plus six. USA Today, a Democratic rebound to plus four. Politico, a Democratic rebound to plus four. Um, They're using um, registered voters, not likely voters. In the likely voter polls from the New York Times, Republicans are up. From the likely voter poll of Rasmussen, Republicans are up. From uh, the likely voter polls of all the likely voters, including Insider Advantage, the GOP is up. The registered voter poll, the Democrats are up. There's a difference in the polling. Now, who's a registered voter? Registered voter, anyone who's registered to vote, who's a likely voter. Voters who have a propensity, not just say they're going to vote, but have voted in the past and know when the election is. Those are the likely voters. And among the likely voters, Republicans are doing fairly well. They're still ahead on the generic ballot. There are big differences here in how the media is covering these polls, and you need to pay attention to that coverage. I suspect there is a rebound for the Democrats in the polling. But again, this is late summer, early fall. It always happens. It always happens. Inevitably happens. Go back. Real Clear Politics has great polling averages that go back a decade, and you can always see the late summer, early fall bounce for the Democrats that coincides to the school season starting again as Republicans go on vacation and then get their kids back to school. It always happens. The problem for the Democrats is this. They're in a bubble with the media and they believe it. The problem for the rest of us is this. How can you believe this stuff at all? If so many reporters are willing to change their narrative, change the way they talk about the recession, change the way they they talk about stories because Joe Biden says so and they want to protect Joe Biden, how can you believe anything they say? And you can't. The media is destroying its own credibility. I played the audio last hour of Jake Tapper at CNN. He's one of the only reporters at that network besides John King, who is willing to call BS on the White House recession talk, who's willing to challenge the White House on the recession talk. Their morning show crew, the evening crew, they're all like, no, the White House says there's no recession. There's no recession. It's this outside group of advisors we've never in the history of our network mentioned before, but they're the ones who say it and they're not saying it. The voters know they are being played. And it destroys the media credibility across the board on a host of stories. And I don't know that the media understands this anymore. I mean, I I played you that audio the other day of Yamichi Alcindor, who is uh, an NBC correspondent and a, a host of a supposedly objective news show. And she's totally down on the transgender. Cultural issues were very popular in that room. He, former President Trump, went on a long rant about transgender Americans, and he used transphobic language. In particular, he was talking about transgender women competing in sports and said that they were men trying to compete against women, which, of course, is not the right way to to, to talk about that issue. For her to say that makes her a partisan And she is the NBC Washington correspondent and the anchor and moderator of Washington Week on PBS. She's not objective. She's a partisan hack. And when these are the people shaping the narratives of the news and they're inside the Democratic bubble and they amplify stories to protect the Democrats and they double down on we're not in a recession because Joe Biden says we're not in a recession, the American people tend to tune this out and they tend to stop answering the phones for the pollsters who call from the political shops and from the press. They do all those things. And then they guide the narrative of the news. And here's the problem for the Democrats, more than you and me. Because they're in that bubble together, they believe that stuff. And because they believe that stuff, they echo that stuff. And because they echo that stuff, they interpret the trend lines around those narratives. And they are fundamentally misinterpreting the trend lines. The trend lines are not good for the Democrats. Why? Because inflation is high. Americans have turned pessimistic on the economy. And the Democrats control everything in Washington, D.C. right now. That's not a path to victory in November, no matter what their polling suddenly tells them is so. The phone number, if you want to call in, 877-973-7425. Happy to have you with me. Uh, Herschel Walker down in Georgia has got the Border Patrol agents uh, on his side. They have endorsed him against Raphael Warnock, who hilariously was very open borders, let the illegals in until they started coming, and it started affecting his poll. And now he's like, we got to do something. We got to seal the border. 
Joe Biden has decided he's going to start building parts of Donald Trump's walls. Uh, poor old, poor old, poor old Joe Biden. Uh, listen to this. This is Mark Penn. He was Hillary Clinton's pollster uh, talking about the state of play for Biden. Well, I mean, it all starts with what's going on in Washington. President Biden losing the support of his own party. A new CNN poll finds a whopping 75 percent of Democrats and Democrat leading voters want a different candidate for 2024, Mark. Joe Biden keeps telling us he's going to run again. I mean, is, do you think this is just marketing or does he really think he's going to run again? Well, he may think he's going to run again, but every single sign here says the odds are stacked up uh, against him running. Now, perhaps if the Democrats have a surprise midterm showing other than what's really expected here, uh, he'll say, look, uh, I, I've done well. I could I could be the standard bearer. But right now, uh, in, in my polls, only 20 percent of Democrats in a Democratic primary pick Joe Biden to be the nominee. Uh, uh, this this is something that I've never seen in kind of 50 years of polling. So so I think it's highly unlikely that he will in the end uh, run again, no matter what he says. And he's got to put on a strong face here through the midterms. He got to put on a strong face. They're, they're, he's doing his best, and the media is doing their best to help him. We're going to get into that. Uh, but listen to this clip from Van Jones on CNN. Hey, that, that, that big sound you hear in the background is a sigh of relief for the Democratic mm-hmm. Party uh, that we're actually going to be able uh, to deliver on some of this stuff. It had been better if, if it happened earlier. But the reality is, you know, to lead means to go first. Uh, uh, Biden has been there pushing, trying to get uh, something done on climate. He promised he would get it done. It's going to get done. He's been pushing to get something done on uh, uh, the chips and, and the semiconductors. So, listen, if you just erase the past six months of nutty stuff, it looks like you've got a president to get an infrastructure bill done, get COVID stuff done, uh, get something done for the American people on climate, get something done on chips. That's a successful presidency. You just, you know, had the past six months of nonsense that uh, takes away from it. The last six months of nonsense. The last six months of nutty stuff. Uh, kudos to Van Jones for calling it what it is. It really has been nutty stuff by the Biden administration. And as well, they are advancing even nuttier stuff. They are advancing the idea of allowing boys to room with girls in college in the name of the transgender agenda. Yeah, I'm not making that up. Uh, They're revising Title IX, redefining male and female. And if a boy identifies as a girl, you should allow that boy to be treated as a girl, including as a college room. This is the Biden administration stuff. And this is why I think the Democrats have to be very careful about buying their own, believing their own press, buying their own BS. It just doesn't make a ton of sense. It, it really does not make a ton of sense for them to be able to pull that stuff off. Um, and I don't know that they can pull it off. I, I actually, uh, I, I look at the polling that shows a Democratic rebound right now about the time I figured there would be a Democratic rebound because of the summer and think it's all going according to schedule. It's all going according to schedule. What's going to happen is they're going to get a couple of things passed from Congress. We'll talk about Joe Manchin's deal here in a little bit. And then it's all going to collapse again. And in that collapse, as we get past Labor Day, the economy does not improve. Remember, you've got the, the the White House itself saying we're in a transition. What are we transitioning to? Not some sort of level of economic growth. We're transitioning into a recession that we're already in that they can't admit we're in, and they're going to have to finally say we're in a recession. I mean, they won't. The press will cover for them, but you'll know it. And that's going to have profound economic impact. And the polling is going to shift again. I just don't see that a mansion bill. I mean, look at the, put it to you this way: the infrastructure bill was partisan, uh, bipartisan, popular. Most people don't even realize it was passed, and those who do don't give Biden and the Democrats credit for it. And uh, people are more upset about the economy. It is the economy stupid. It remains the economy stupid, and that's not going to change no matter what they say about abortion or anything else. It's just striking to me how all of the narratives comport to the pro-abortion movement and all the Democratic claims just seem to be, oh, my gosh, they're proven true by our polling. No, I think this is the late summer bounce that Democrats always get. As Republicans go on vacation and get their kids back to school, time will tell. When we come back, though, we got to move on because the border, he's going to build the wall. Never fails. Have a five-minute commercial break. Put a protein bar in my mouth because I'm hungry. 
And these freaking things take forever to chew up. <laughs> I want to play you some audio. This is Larry Summers. Larry Summers is the guy who warned the Democrats a recession was coming. And they blasted him. Well, he's trying to get in good with them now and says, well, listen to this with Andrea Mitchell on MSNBC. Thank you very much for being with us, Larry. Good to be with you, you, Andrea. Well, you've been warning about inflation since last spring. You were one of the early hawks, if you will. And you were apparently critically involved in persuading Senator Manchin to alleviate his concerns that this new reconciliation package is not inflationary, that they are hoping to pass. Uh, Tell us what, what points you were making about that package and about, you know, the future of government spending. Look, I think we've got a very difficult economic situation, and I'll come back to that. But I think this bill is an important positive bill. It will reduce the deficit over time, and that reduces demand pressure on the economy. It will stimulate energy supply, and that reduces price pressure. It will use government purchasing power more effectively to buy pharmaceuticals, and that too reduces prices. So any way you slice it, I think this bill is anti-inflationary, and at the same time, it's pro-environmental, it's uh, pro-fairness, it's good on uh, climate change, and so I think it's an important uh, step forward, and this plus the CHIPS Act, I think puts us in a very good situation uh, economically for what is going to be a uh, very difficult period. This bill did not pass. Uh, that that's a very, a very grave, uh, grave promote premonition as to what would happen, obviously, if it does not pass. So let's talk about the economy, the basic economy. You said it's complicated. Uh, Complicated could be a euphemism for it's not going to turn around anytime soon. Aha. Here we go. Jim. All right. Now I can hear everybody. Y'all will have to y'all will have to forgive me. My microphone, it turned out I hit the mute button while Larry Summers was talking so that I could cough and I forgot to hit the mute button again. I'm a professional, trust me. It's just Friday. It's been a long week. Nonetheless, so here's the problem with Larry Summers. Uh, Larry Summers is saying that um, you got bad economic news, you got bad inflation news, but this bill is good. Now, why does he say the bill is good? This is something you got to understand. It's something fundamental that Democrats believe about this mansion plan, and it's something that goes back to modern monetary theory. Larry Summers is not an advocate of modern monetary theory. He's been been attacked a number of times by progressives for not liking modern monetary theory. But there is a common strain across all Democrats, including Larry Summers. They believe there is another way to fight inflation other than raising interest rates. That other way to raise, uh, to, to fight inflation is to raise taxes, particularly on corporations. And one of the ideas in this mansion plan uh, that he's hammered out with Joe, uh, with, with Chuck Schumer, is to make a minimum corporate income tax rate of 15%. I don't know yet if Kristen Sinema is going to go along with that. It appears that she might. Uh, she had been opposed in the past to doing this. The problem with the corporate income tax, uh, for those of you who don't understand it, Corporations don't actually pay taxes. On paper, they pay taxes. But the way corporations pay taxes is they raise prices. They pass the tax increase along to consumers. So at a time you have high inflation already, if you raise taxes on corporations, they're going to raise the cost of their products because they have a fiduciary duty to their shareholders. And with a fiduciary duty to their shareholders, their duty is to maximize their revenue and profits. And so if an income tax comes along with an increase, they're going to raise their costs and pass those on to consumers in order to maintain the revenue and profits. They're not going to take a profit hit. They're just going to raise their costs and pass it to the consumers which is why you don't want to do it when you've got record high inflation. It's it's very interesting 
that they're going to pursue this sort of stuff, that they're going to raise taxes on this sort of stuff. Uh, And this bill itself, I'm not exactly sure that they're going to be able to pull all this stuff off. But there's something else here as well. Um, And and you should also know that uh, the University of Pennsylvania's business school, Wharton, uh, says the so-called Inflation Reduction Act will actually increase inflation until 2024. Um, all of you people who said maybe Manchin will become one of us, maybe Manchin will convert, maybe Manchin will become a Republican. He's never been a Republican. Now, there are also going to be fee increases related to drilling onshore and offshore. So that's going to cause costs to go up there. Um, it, it's, it's Inflation is not going to be reduced by the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, let me read you this provision. The deal includes a means-tested $7,500 tax credit to make new electric vehicles more affordable and a $4,000 tax credit for used electric vehicles, according to the package. It will reduce the deficit beyond the record-setting $1.7 trillion in deficit reduction we've already had uh, and will help fight inflation because of that, according to the White House, except there's a problem. We're still going to have debt and deficit. All of the spin on this is not a not very wise. You raise corporate taxes, your prices go up. This isn't hard. This is well known. And that ultimately is the problem. Joe Manchin is a Democrat. Joe Manchin is okay with raising taxes. He's okay with doing these sorts of things. He's going to be protected with oil and gas. In fact, let me read you uh, some of what Manchin has gotten out of this deal. Um, The deal would reinstate an offshore oil and gas lease sale conducted in the Gulf of Mexico. The lease sale of 80 million acres represented the largest such auction in U.S. history. The legislation would require the administration to conduct two more lease sales in the Gulf and another in Alaska's Cook Inlet that Biden canceled last year. At the same time, the royalty rates would go up. The money companies pay the government for oil and gas they produce on federal lands would climb to 16.66% up from 12.5%. Offshore royalties would be set at no less than 16.66% compared to 12.5% currently. So the cost to do business goes up even as the land expands on which they can drill. That's going to raise your prices too. It's going to raise your prices. There's also $27 billion towards a clean energy technology accelerator to support the deployment of an emissions reduction technology, especially in disadvantaged communities. Woohoo! The program resembles a national green bank. A green bank, that's what environmentalists want, loans to businesses wanting to take advantage of the Green New Deal. That money comes from you. They can say it's going to help reduce the deficit. But here again, I think this is one of those situations where the Democrats are going to pass this thinking it helps them. And the economic effect is actually that it hurts them even more. And they're going to get the blame. They're not going to get the credit. They're going to get the blame. The Democrats have talked themselves in the media into the idea that inflation is a worldwide problem that is affecting us and everyone else equally. They cannot actually admit that they themselves are making it worse. They cannot actually admit that they themselves, with their policies, are contributing to it. And along comes Joe Manchin after months and months of saying, no, 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 not me. I'm not going to spend. I'm not going to spend. He he comes along and says, all right, I'll spend. But I'm going to spend in a way I want. Now, no one has talked to Kristen Cinema yet. Kristen Cinema could potentially scuttle the deal. But there's actually an interesting ramification here. There are other things that the Senate wanted to do. The Senate wanted to ratify as federal law gay marriage and interracial marriage. Susan Collins has come out and said because the Democrats' climate deal, they feel stabbed in the back. The Republicans came together with the Democrats to pass the CHIPS Act. The CHIPS Act will spend a lot of money moving American manufacturing of of computer chips back to this country out of China. 
And the Republicans thought they had a deal. We're going to pass this. The Democrats are going to give up on reconciliation. So they pass it, and then, then suddenly Joe Manchin comes out and says, hey, let's do reconciliation now, guys. So the Republicans are now trying to kill this in the House of Representatives, kill the CHIPS Act in the House of Representatives. They're trying to get all the Republicans on board to kill it. They may succeed. A number of Democrats in the House oppose it. We'll see if that Nancy Pelosi can whip them hard enough. But in so doing it, the Democrats are going to kill same-sex marriage ratification. They had the votes to pass the Senate, but because of the Manchin deal now, there's no more trust left in the Senate. They're going to kill same-sex marriage. Those of you who are worried about your marriages, if you're gay, understand that this reconciliation deal in the Senate kills the federal legislation that otherwise would have passed. It may kill the CHIPS legislation in the House of Representatives. And it cuts short all other negotiations for the rest of the year. It gives the Democrats a win. My suspicion is that like the bipartisan infrastructure deal, it gives the Democrats a win no one's thinking about in November, particularly as corporations with their increased rates start raising costs to consumers. And the Democrats can blame businesses all they want on this stuff, but we've seen the data. Uh, People are not blaming businesses. People are blaming Joe Biden. And the blame game is going to continue with this stuff. It's so obvious to me that this is going to happen. It's so obvious to everyone on the outside this is going to happen. It's even obvious to a lot of Democrats on the outside that doing this right now is pretty dangerous for the Democrats, but they are desperate to say they got something passed. They're desperate for any sort of win that can help them change the narrative. And so this will be their win, and I suspect it will be a very fearic victory for the Democrats. That fearic victory is going to cause economic turmoil. We're already in it. If you're worried about your retirement savings, you may want to reach out to GoldCo. See how precious metals, particularly physical gold and silver, can help your uh, retirement. Call 855-904-5933. 855-904-5933. They will send you a free wealth protection kit to learn how to use gold and silver to protect and grow your money. Thousands of retirees are protecting their retirement savings, and many are getting $10,000 or more in free silver for doing it. Call GoldCo. See if you qualify for their offer. They've been helping thousands of Americans with their retirement savings, fighting inflation, stock market crashes. They might be able to help you. If you text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777, I will text you back Gold Coast toll-free number. You can call them, see if they're a good fit for you and you for them. I forgot I did a disservice to you. I apologize. First of all, it is a free-for-all here. You can call in. 877-973-7425 if you want to be on the program. But I did a service to you. I forgot to mention, if you go to omahasteaks.com and you put Eric in the search bar, you can get the All-American Assortment with 12 burgers for free from omahasteaks.com. All you do is put Eric in the search bar, E-R-I-C-K. If you're on mobile, in fact, you know, I've never actually done this on mobile. I always do it on my desktop. I like my computer uh, for stuff like that. But I go to omahasteaks.com and on the website. So I'm on my iPhone at omahasteaks.com. And when the website pulls up and you get to see all the stuff at omahasteaks.com, why aren't you pulling up? Yep, you see the search bar even at the top. Even on mobile, you see the search bar. And when you click it, you put in E-R-I-C-K, Eric, and you search. And what happens is you see the All-American Assortment. And with the All-American Assortment, you get 12 burgers for free. Now, you get over 50% savings. You get butcher cut fillets, boneless pork chops, chicken breast, gourmet jumbo franks, potatoes au gratin, caramel apple tartlets, Omaha steak steak seasoning, and 12 burgers for free. And this is not your just standard ground chuck fare. These are the Omaha steak burgers. You also get 100% satisfaction guarantee. They want to keep you happy because they want you to be a repeat customer. They've been doing this since 1917. They know what they're doing. OmahaSteaks.com. You put Eric, E-R-I-C-K, in the search bar. Get the All-American Assortment. You get over 50% savings. You get 100% satisfaction guarantee. And you get 12 burgers for free. 
you know, with summer grilling. You got to do that. That reminds me, I got to send out a recipe. I did not send a recipe out this week. We were so busy with the carathon and stuff. By the way, it looks like we've hit over a million dollars uh, with that carathon. Thanks to all of you nationwide who stepped up to help. Um, someone in your community, I promise you, has benefited from that facility. It's such a good cause. But uh, we're over a million dollars there. Now, we got other stuff we got to talk about because I do want to get into this polling when we come back uh, about the abortion activists less likely to vote in November, which kind of gives the lie to all the other polling you're seeing out there showing a Democratic surge. But before that, I got I to gotta talk about something. Months ago, Stacey Abrams... The gubernatorial candidate in Georgia, she started running an ad with a retired police officer who attacked Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, for signing the constitutional carry, concealed carry legislation. And people started emailing me, who is this police officer? Where did she find this guy? I don't know anybody in police officer in Georgia who supports her. And I reached out to a friend of mine and said, I think it's some retiree from DeKalb County. DeKalb County, very liberal part of the state. He didn't know, but that's what he thought, that he thought it was retiree from DeKalb County. Turns out nobody can find this mysterious sheriff's deputy. Does not appear to be a sheriff's deputy from Georgia. Probably from California, given where all of her donations come from. Probably someone from California. But it's remarkable that it was not national media nor local media in Georgia that ran with the story. It was the Washington Free Beacon, a conservative news outlet, that walked this, uh, that, that found the story. Everybody else in the press, locally and nationally, gave Stacey Abrams a pass. It was the Washington Free Beacon that tracked down the facts of the story and cannot find, this is not a known person living in Georgia, Claiming to be a retired sheriff. Uh, this this is the headline. Stacey Abrams can't find a Georgia cop who supports her. Georgia Democratic gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams is out with a new ad that uses a former deputy sheriff to argue Abrams' opponent is making the state less safe. The officer never served in Georgia. The July 12th ad titled Dangerous, Stacey's Leadership Pack, One Georgia, employs a former deputy sheriff identified only as Dennis to claim that Governor Brian Kemp may talk tough but makes us less safe. But Dennis never patrolled Atlanta or any other Georgia street. Dennis is an LGBTQ attorney and Democratic activist, Dennis Collard, a Florida native who worked as a police officer until 1999. He went on to join an Atlanta-based law firm in 2003, 13 years before founding his own divorce firm in Atlanta. This is not the first time Abrams has gone out of state for political support. Only 14% of her $50 million came from Georgia residents. Jackson County Sheriff Janice uh, Mangum, one of the more than 100 Georgia sheriffs endorsing Kemp, said she was not surprised that Abrams couldn't find a police officer who had actually served in the Peach State. How is this not a national story? You Atlanta media outlets listening to me right now. How is this not a national story that Abrams had to find someone who was never actually a police officer in Georgia to pretend to be a Georgia police officer for purposes of her commercial. They should be embarrassed by this, and the media should be embarrassed for not reporting on it. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woo a hand clap or a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.